Tak láta mi tak. Let's go light for C++ developer. So, maybe a little bit more practical talk than the first part. I hope you find it interesting. Um, SQLite was developed about 2000 from D. Richard Hip, and it's for Twain Richard Hip. I, very long I was reading Doctor, <laughs> but, but maybe that's just because I'm from Germany, but it's, it's Twain Richard Hip. And it was developed act actually as a kind of uh, a stub, is like I would describe it. So he was tired of setting up a whole database system like, like uh, Postgre or Oracle just to uh, create some GUIs. So he created basically a stub SQL, SQL server. And then he put the, the source code into public domain under no license actually, and this took off. So it's very wide used today. So who is actually a SQLite user here? Do we have some? It used to be, as you know. Yeah. But actually, it's like this you all should have raised your hands because you are all user of SQLite. So SQLite is basically the widest spread of software in the planet, it's also in space. You have it literally everywhere. It's on every mobile phone, exactly. It's on every computer, it's in multiple version. Routers, you have at home, doesn't matter. You find it maybe even in a disk machine. So it's everywhere. So I ask this. So, but the question is also what is SQLite, right? Because a lot of people say different things. So it's definitely not a small version of. MySQL, Proske, or any other database system. Um, the limits from SQLite are rather huge. So you can create uh, 140 terabytes big databases. So this is not a small something with a theoretical number of rows because first you run out of disk space and this disk space is just calculated. It was never tested because there is no test suite with such disks attached. So it is a, a full database system and it can be quite huge. So it's definitely not a small something. But it's a zero config relational database and it can be statically linked to your application. So what does this mean? It's shipped as a single C header and a C source code file. So it's very easy to add to your project. Um, it works, the default are fantastic. However, you can fine tune. There are a lot of uh, compile time options. I, ca I ca could open them, but they, they are really. Uh, so, so the compile time options, I, I don't go into the details because they are endless. Mm -hmm. So, zero config doesn't mean there is nothing to config, but you just need to, to, to read the first chapter here. This is the most common you would like to config when you happen when you're running with this. Oh, my presentation is gone. So the back on track. I will not open any links anymore. It was it. Okay, so zero configuration can be started to link in your application in opposite to other databases. They run in their own address space. And, uh, SQLite is in your address space, so it's really in your application. When you run with a SQL server, PostgreSQL, you name it, it is an application somewhere. It's maybe not even on your computer. So SQLite is always in your application, and this is great. It's a uh, relational application file format. So the user defines how to use SQLite. You can use it with threads, you can use it without threads. Multiple writers is not the primary use case because SQLite does not table-based locking like other databases. It always locks the whole database file since it's embedded, and you can open the file from multiple applications. So when you write, the whole file will be locked. Um, it's a relational database with all features like transactions, so it's a good own file format if you need to spare configuration values and you always want to have a consistent state. 
So if you read data in and you want to write three different things to save your state or massing, you don't want to end up with a half finished uh, state because someone put the power out, then this is what it supports. So it's also a good key value database store if you want to, to write data. And SQLite is actually much, much more. It has various extensions uh, since recently, well, already two years or so. Uh, JSON support, you have full text uh, search, uh, Atri tables for GIS applications, CVS tables from files, so you can write your uh, uh, plugins and open CVS files as there would be a table, and then you could also make it for other formats. It's a great open source project. I said it here, here is the source code, and, and first it was not thought about it, but then it became uh, copy left. It's excellent tested. I said it's in space, it's in airplanes, it's everywhere. It's super documented. And it can also be used as an in memory data store. So you can create a database just in memory, which is, exists just for the runtime of your application, which is a very nice feature if you need it. So basically, this is what SQLite is in a short summary. Um, any questions to this so far? No? Good. Then performance. Originally, I had a little bit a different title for, for this presentation. And I have taken it away, but it's still here. So every presentation needs charts, so I've added some charts. And this is my women's visual, uh, visualization. So X is the runtime of the application code where our C++ code is, and the underscore is the time spent in the database call. When I say select or something, update, you are in SQLite land. So this is when you use it, actually. You spend the most time in the database. And you can use any library available to talk with them. It will be like this. If you handcraft the C++ code, you will not notice any difference. And I tried it, and it's devastating. You spend all the time in the database, and you think and there is no optimization. If you really want to do optimization, you need to understand SQLite and database normalization. So SQL and database normalization. Um, if you have a database where this matters, if you have a database where you say, I just use it as key value store, there is not much to optimize. But if you have complex uh, structures, then you need to learn about this thing, because there is where you optimize stuff and there will uh, ready to use library will not help that much. But I said there are different things about performance. So performance can be time to market. It could be daily changes uh, requirements like customer needs this, this, this. And you might want to also write the application which runs with whatever database backup backend you, you like like a Jira, for example, a back tracing system. It says, well, we run on your computer and you define which database to use. This is optional, mostly not what we do in C++, right? Or I especially we're in embedded land. So when I care about performance, I have to look at this stuff, which is, is my SQL saying, do I have a good database normalization, which is a data-driven layout? Do I have the indexes there where I need them? not there where we think, or some two things there should be. And if it becomes really hard, and you have really complex que uh, queries, you either might do one uh, query plan execution, look into how a query is executed, and then you can rearrange your stuff. But mostly you don't need this. So this is what I have to say to performance. Any questions to this? Well, great. So then my Learn SQL, it's simple, beautiful, and fun, because this is where performance comes from. Um, since C++ 11, it's great to write. I mean, when you have written in your source code file, uh, pre-C++ 11, multi-line strings were a pain. Now, with uh, raw string literals, you just develop in your whatever tool you use to write your queries, and you copy it into the C++ code, and you're good to go. It's very convenient. SQL is fun and has cool words. <laughs> First generation declarative language, relational algebra, duple related algebra, aggregate functions, scalar functions. 
So if Haskell developer come to you, you have also something in the repertoire. But this is not, not just a joke. If, if, you, if you learn a little bit about databases, you get a lot of things what functional programmer does. Right? You have a list of data and you manipulate it, or you select something, or you transform, transform something from A and B. And it's all about data. So DDD is data-driven design, but it's also data definition language, data manipulation language, and data control language. Uh, all SQL databases have this. SQLite data control language is just file permissions. I can say a user is not allowed to access the file or is. In other languages, you can create users, create groups, and add them with SQL statements, and this is pretty cool. Um, data definition language is how you create your tables, and data manipulation language insert update, select and apply functions to this data. So, entity relational crash course. Right? So, in a database, you define entities, and these are basically your tables, and columns are attributes, and attributes might have constraint. Let's say an attribute is allowed to be between 0 and 100, or it's the birthday, it should be not more than 120 years ago, or something like this. There might be relations between entities. So there's one-to-one -one relation, one-to-many, many-to-one, and many-to-many. -many. And the goal is when you uh, create your database, or you normalize the data, is to keep redundancies to zero and to ensure data correctness and storage level. So this is a, a most simple example I can think about it, what is meant. You have an artist, and the artist has tracks. And we have a reference from the, from the tracks to the artist. So we cannot create a, a, a track without an artist. It's not possible. Same way we cannot delete the artist as long as there are tracks. Or you make a rule that says, when I delete the artist, also all tracks will be gone. It's the, how you define your relation. And this is the, the most simple for a one-to-many relation, where you define, um, no, where you apply normalization. And the well-defined storage is always in the well-defined state. So if it's written on disk, you can trust this. And a huge part of our civilization is on top of this. If it wouldn't be like this, we would have really headaches. But in databases, we trust. And this is, this is you, you can utilize this stuff when you use SQLite in your C++ application on, on a better system, so you can utilize this. So uh, SQL, since, since the key value storage has popped up, becomes, oh my god, SQL, but it's, it's, it's just another language. A few days and you, you have it. Insert, update, delete to manipulate data. Select with ordered by, group by to give me data. You can apply aggregate function over a whole uh, data set, where you get, give me the average weight of all items in my database or give me the average uh, costs of, of all my, my goods that in this category. You can apply scalar functions like trimming thing, uh, things. It's for each value in the, in the result. And then we have joins, of course, the relations. But it's just another programming language, so it's not really hard. So if you, if you think that this is something simple, then you will learn it very fast. And oh my god, I said joins, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, that's it. As uh, Mengenle uh, said things, this is everything you need to know about joins. If you write this out and put it on your table, when you learn SQL, that's it. So you get everything from one plus where is the relation to the other. I want just what has a relation between two things. I want everything from every all. What is not here is the Cartesian product. I don't know how to visualize it. But it's really not that hard. And this is beautiful. So when you learn SQL, and then you realize, oh, I can replace my code with an elegant SQL command, where it's like, hey, give me the data that fulfills this criterion and apply this transformation. And it's a string like this. This is beautiful. And you, you ask for data and information and you get it. And this is beautiful. Yes, and with SQLite 3, it's more, even more fun. 
because you can register your own C and C++ function for SQLite. So you could say my fupa and you could say select my fupa from whatever. So my fupa field name from table and my fupa will be applied to any value. Or you could make your own aggregate functions. So you can really interact with, with the data and manipulate it and extend it. And SQL databases are event driven, so they all have support triggers, also SQLite. So if you have an event on data, on insert, on update, on delete, you get a notification before and after. And then you have events, and then you can make this is very beautiful. And you can do a lot of more, so if you start to play, you develop a lot of ideas which just need a use case. So. <laughs> but it's a, it's a fun toy. So yeah, this is, the basics are simple. Can be learned very quickly if you want to learn it. Not everyone in the project needs to be expert, but before you learn a DSL of any framework, learn SQL, SQL because it's, you can put it on any database system. Um, put the data where it should be, relational storages, and design your data. Um, enterprise relation models have more value than object diagrams. This is a personal opinion, but... And demo time. I didn't do this, but I have some SQL here. And I thought I will execute this. So I open uh, in memory database because I don't need it anywhere. I throw it away and I execute this. <laughs> <laughs> so SQL is not just, I mean, to be fair, this is, this is a fixed point query. So it's to, to process relational data. This is outside of uh, relational algebra, but every database system supports this. And you can actually solve uh, Sudoku with, with this. I just need to have a GUI because the input looks, but maybe in the future. So, yeah, that is well. It's really fun. <laughs> okay, any questions to this so far? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. If it's so powerful, why is it called light? It's called light. <laughs> you need to ask the author, basically. <laughs> but it is lightweight because it 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 mean it is in your process. I mean, if if you if you do nothing, it doesn't need resources. <laughs> Right? When, when you put up your local Postgres or MySQL database, you will always have a process that does something and you will have your program. And the other stuff is just data on a disk and you don't even call it, right? So there is no management, you are tired on the data. Okay. Yeah, I think light refers to the overhead. So light refers to the overhead, so here yeah. is excellent. There is almost Tuck. no overhead, yeah. As you said, one file, no, no, almost no memory overhead, yeah. no disk overhead. Exactly. Code base is very small as well. Yes, I mean the file is really huge, so if it's it's developed as multiple files, but then there is a program that takes all these files and put it in one file, and this is really really huge. So coming in the debugger into this file is, is interesting, but you can do it. Or, uh, can queries be optimized uh, during compile time? Uh, we will come to this. Okay, some code, because this is C++. Um, it might be a little bit fast, but the main point is uh, not to memorize everything, but I show now to see it, how simple it is, so you can try the trip. So create a database connection in SQLite. Is, it is a C interface, right? So we, we use SQLite open with a name and a pointer to a pointer, and if it's an error code, then you know the C code, right? If we have an error, we need to close it. We use the database and then we need to close it. So in C++, we will do it like this. We define a type, we call it connection, database, whatever. I don't even care about the type of, of, of SQLite close. It's the type of the function, right? I take a unit pointer because I think it's a proper type for it. And I encapsulate this call to return a unit pointer if it works. If not, you need to define your own error handling. And from now on, it's, it's, you can use it like this. And you have a database connection. 
And this is already enough to execute arbitrary SQL statements. So <coughs> I've written a sample function which is execute. It takes a not null. This is borrowed from the Microsoft support library. Um, database and, and some string. In future, this should be possibly a string view. And we encapsulate, the, we, we, we have a pointer to error message we call SQLite exec with the database, the SQL. You could define a size, what you want to, to execute, and, uh, and the pointer to the uh, code you have not executed if you define the size. And the error message, I use, have never had a usage for this too. And then the default C stuff. But I said we, we encapsulate it. But this is enough to create uh, already things, right? So I can use my, my open database. And I can create execute with the database and create things, where it's a nice thing to encapsulate uh, sequels in the function to return it. That's called const expression because you want to unit test this stuff. And with again the, the memory database, if you play around, you don't need to create files. It's also very great for, for unit testing. So I've talked about transactions. So transactions is uh, all or nothing. So if you make three inserts. In a, within a transaction, either all three succeed or no. Um, transaction is just another scope card, and you can encapsulate it like this or something similar. Where you say, okay, I take a struct, it takes constructor, uh, a database, and calls begin transaction. And if we haven't committed it, we will roll back the transaction. And if we commit it, we commit and, and notify that we have it. And this is just movable. The other operations are not required. And then you can put things in, trans in transaction. So this is really not hard. And the code looks like this. And you will either create the table plus two things, or you have nothing if it fails. So now we come to compile. SQL, but it might be a little bit different than you thought. So each SQL is a, is a string, right? And if you put it to a database, the database needs to compile the statement. So the first time it's always string, and small statements could be faster to execute than compiling the string. So you want to pre-compile it and remember this stuff. This is usually called stored procedures in some database system, and we can also do this with, with SQLite. And compiled uh, SQL commands can have parameters, of course. So in SQLite syntax, they will look like this. We insert into something. And if it's a table with three fields, we take three different parameters. And you can think about this like a function, add, one, two, three, right? You can also give names to this, which is nice to the person who will read this code in two months or so. <laughs> so but they will still have indexes. And when you create this as a compiled statement, you can execute it and just apply the, the new values. And the string will not be need to reinterpret it. It will be just executed by applying the values. And creating a compiled statement works uh, like this. It's the usual uh, C interface from, from SQLite with a return value. We take the database, we take the string, links, uh, a pointer to the statement. Statement pointer, pointer to a pointer, and C. And I think this is the error message. I would have to look it up. And if the return value is not okay, you need to do whatever you have to do. And then when you use the statement, you execute add as many things as you want, or delete stuff, or whatever. And then you need to use finalize, because otherwise it's, you will have unfreed resources, and you don't want to have this. And we will do it like the database in, in, in C++ and encapsulate it in a unit pointer, call it statement or whatever. And uh, the concept is the same. We take the database, we take maybe a string view in future, we encapsulate the code and put it in our unit pointer and return this. And then we don't need to, to think about freeing resources which might have bad side effects when you close a database and you have the statements open. So this problem will be is, is solved. Then you create your things. And here we have 
the select star is wrong, sorry for this, it should be insert into things, values, and this is the uh, compiled statement. Or you could also select from things, it doesn't matter. Setting st uh, statement parameters, yeah, you have lightning talks about this, how to do this with templates and so on. Uh, point here is to demonstrate there is SQLite bind type functions, and there are not that many SQLite types. Um, we have basically two categories, one is for int and real value, so floating point values, and the other is for strings and uh, blob binary data. So here is no big surprise, you call SQLite bind int in 64 float, you take the statements, the index, and the value of the type, of course. If it doesn't return SQLite, okay, you can throw. For text, you need to define a pointer to the begin, like typically this stuff. How long is it? And here you have a parameter where you say, oh, SQLite, please manage this data for me. Or you say, then it needs to be copied, of course. Or you say, okay, you just get a pointer to this and I will manage the resource. So if you have large pictures or something like this, you want to manage the data. So it's a little bit hard for a library to, to generalize this, so it's better to write it your own. And that's it, how you set, set parameters. So the types is int, six, int 64 double. Then you have, of course, null. So you can set the parameter to null value. Text, text 16 or text 64. Uh, text 16 is, of course, a Windows relict. Um, use Unicode and then you have text. And blob is in future as the debate. Yeah, this, uh, I had never used for it, and I will run away if I have a project with them. And so, as I said, SQLite Transcend and SQLite Static, either you manage the resource for blob and text, or SQLite will do it. So now when we select data or do something, we want also to, to, to handle the result. Uh, the SQL, SQLite function is SQLite step on the statement which we have created. And if it's a insert, delete, it just says OK or error. This is the first case. If it's a select statement with data, it will say, OK, I have a row of data for you. Or when you're done, there is no more data, it says, OK, we are done. So this is the return value of, of SQLite step. And one way to do it is to implement, we can implement it as one, but give me a callback. And if there is data, I will call the callback. And if the callback says continue, I will go to the next row. And then the user doesn't need to write loops anymore. So this is uh, convenient. It's just a function. And you will call it with the statement. Although with the statement, you can then access the data. But the loop is, is gone. We will see it in a moment. So the, the callback can be a function, lambda, or whatever. So the callback is just a function that takes a SQLite statement, which guarantees has a value, it makes things easier. And the run function, if we were to implement this, this is a little bit okay. Uh, we have a reset card. So if, if we don't step with, a, with a, a select statement to the end, the next time we call the same statement, we want to start from the begin. So we need to reset it. So it's just another scope card, which we reset when we exit the code. It will call SQLite reset on the statement. This is just okay. I pose a little bit with Swiss code. I've moved the inner loop to something which you can unit test. And this is how you uh, um, execute the, the statement. So you call step on this. And if you have a callback, you call the callback with the statement. And then the loop is actually empty, and you can unit test this. This looks maybe a little bit wild, but it's, you can as I said, implement it as you want. And doing this way, you could move this to a function and write unit tests for it, which is nice to write unit tests for inner loops, because there are no inner loops longer. And the callback would look like this. So the, the implementation, you can copy it from the net or something like this, but you would implement the callback. And you would say, OK, for, for each column in the statement, there is a row. And then I process this. And you do it by, OK, what is the type? Either you know the type or you, you ask for it. And if it's null, OK, and this is just write null. If it's a 64, I will ac uh, access the integer. If it's a double, I will access the double. If it's uh, 
text, we need to get uh, the pointer to the first text, and then we need to get the size, and then we can copy it into a string. And blob would be actually the same, but I just write out blob because it makes no sense. So basically, you get the statement. You ask what is the type of the first column, second column, third column. And depending on what you get back, you, you do your actions. And this is how you access data from, from select statements. You want column counts, how many columns are there. You want the type of a column. You want the size, possibly, if it's a string or blob. And then when you know it's int double, you access it. And that's it. That's the basic to deal with SQLite, so it's absolutely not hard. We have SQLite 3 to open, execute arbitrary string, prepare to generate prepared statements, step plus handling of the return value to execute the statements and handle the results, bind data in for parameters, and column type plus helpers to get data out. And when you're using this, it's it's it looks actually like this. Open a database within the transactions and create statement that I, I call run with the statement and dump the current row with the function we have written and it will just run right out what this is. Okay, here is a little bit on row. When we have our callback, it should possibly be for auto column in columns. So if you want, you can implement this. It's uh, not a difficult action, or you can copy it when you find the type. OK, security. Let's look at security. So say we create a table, and we add. So this is the create table, what we knew. We add something, and we add an initial thing, and then we return the statement that user can apply the statement and, and add additional things, right? And here bad things happen, right? So the user makes a mistake, so we, we yeah, return yeah, the first. So one, this is correct, this is correct, but this should actually be a, a double, right? But these things happen. And SQLite does duck typing. And this can be a feature, but it can be held if you don't want it. So SQLite, when it creates a table and say, hey, I want this table as an integer, it says, okay, it's a, it's a hint you want the integer. But actually, if you give me a string and you don't protect it, I will store a string there. And when you ask for the data and you ask for int, I will interpret it as an int, and it has uh, conversion rules that apply. And they may not be as you are. So if you have a, a callback print things, and this is just uh, get integer, get text with point, point and size, and get double, because you say, I know the type, right? What else shall it be? And you say, give me the, the ID, the name, and the value, and the value is double. Then bad six happen. So if this is the code, the first thing, our generic function where we ask the type and then take action, it will find out that it's second. But the second function where we say, hey, what else shall it be? Because I'm the developer of it, I know it, what it is you will get a zero. And this might be a uh, very expensive uh, mistake. So this is something you need to, to, to keep in mind, duck typing in SQLite, which can be a feature. Yes, if you don't care about the types, someone else will do it. Maybe not as you want. OK, back to this. If you know what column is, we could actually work with DB value types, and we could specify the types. So if we have a prepared statement, we can execute this with an integer, with a string, and a, and a real value, because we said integer, text, and real. But if we execute it like this, it will throw an exception. So this is one way to implement the, the type security if you don't want to implement the SQL. On, on the database layer. You could also make a, a trigger on, on inset data. I expect this to be an integer, and if it's a string, you say, OK, error. But if you want to make it in, in C++, you can do it like this. And the same when you select data, when you know what, you, what the column is, 
it would call it field in a field in a row. So for each row in the result of a select statement, and for each field in the row, you can encapsulate this very easy to get the type, get the storage type. So you can have actually two types because you could say, okay, I want a variant type, but then you have, okay, it's a variant, but what is actually the underlying type? It could be integer or string or whatever. So there are two properties, and if you define no types. You would get a, a result, uh, something like variant int, variant text, and so on. So at least you, you will not have undefined behavior or work with wrong values, because if you say on such a column, give me the, the integer and it's a string, it can be implemented, hey, if you want the integer of a string, I throw an exception. This is what happens here, right? So give me a data set, select, I specify the types. And if they're not as expected, this will already throw. And here, okay, I have to check for null. Because it could be null, right? So these are ways to, to implement security in your C code. You can look at this library. It's a C++ wrapper, which is one of the hobby projects I have. It hasn't much progress since I make this group here. <laughs> but um, I do not recommend usage of it anyway. Because write your own stuff. As you have seen, it's it's so easy. If if I show the the source code, which we have written, um, actually all the code I have shown it compiles. It is 100 row the the not null from from the the GSL library, and then it's it's pretty. You can write this in two days. Right here is already the, the example stuff. I will put it online, you can copy it later. So, <clears throat> but it supports what, what I've showed you. Types in, types out. You could make it uh, also, you could de define, uh, combine time types and take parameters as a tuple, for example, and you put in a type list. It has no performance impact at all, <laughs> I've tried it. So if you make this at runtime and compile them, it's, it's in the context of the application, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. But you can look at it as a, uh, as a, as a inspiration, yes. And that's it, SQLite for C++ developer in a nutshell. Parts of the presentation have been sh handled to short, request the workshop. We will do one for you. You can also ask our Ask us, C plus plus, Sweden C for P. That's it. Thanks for listening. <laughs> and if there are any questions, we can do questions. If not, we can maybe get one something to drink for the rest of the evening. Yes. Uh, you said it was uh, used in the embedded system. Can you use it in a small microcontroller? Well, uh, it, uh, I don't know how small it is. Usually the embedded systems I run, they have an operating system. You know, there are embedded systems without operating system. I have at least a memory management unit. So there they are. I don't know how much you can scale it down. You would have to look up what is the smallest possibility. But it's I wouldn't be surprised if it's run. On